uh, it's a great pleasure. You can take off your mask if you want. Uh, I don't, no need, yeah. So it's a great pleasure. Uh, this, I, th I believe this is the uh, first in-person seminar I gave after the pandemic. So it's uh, such a great pleasure to see the audience in person. Uh, I'll talk about uh, merging human machine intelligence with soft materials technology. Uh, I'll focus on sensors in this talk, Xuan Hezao from MIT. Uh, so uh, uh, conflict of interest disclosure, I'm a co-founder of a startup called Sana Hill, which is based on bioadhesive technology. By the way, they have a, a startup showcase on the second floor, so just let everyone know. Uh, now, uh, the opportunity we see is really this a gap between humans and the machines, right? Uh, over the last century, we see great progress in terms of understanding and engineering human body. Uh, more than medicine, biology, genetics, uh, these are the opportunities. So similarly, in the domain of uh, machines, we see electronics, computer, internet, AI, robotics, uh, great advance. However, there's a huge gap in between, right? Uh, now, what if we can merge them uh, together in a seamless way? Uh, so number one, impact better health. That's something we all want. Uh, if you take a look at all the way from wearable devices, medical equipment to medical implants, uh, these are machines merging with the human body uh, over you know, hours to days to even months to years. Right? Uh, however, if you think about it, over uh, decades, uh, the interface between those devices and the human has not been changed. You know, usually metal electrode, uh, something like that, uh, in uh, interaction with the human body. And, uh, you know, we design more and more sophisticated machines, but uh, lots of challenges we still cannot address. How to detect COVID contraction in real time, right? Uh, how to continuous measure and modulate blood pressure over months. Uh, how to treat a stroke remotely within the golden hour. These are the you know, challenges. Uh, so we have the equipment, we have the machine ready due to this weak interface. Uh, we really cannot achieve this vision. Uh, understand the brain, that's the second impact. So we have 86 billion neurons in the brain. Uh, how to even interface with a million neurons in a living brain? So we have no idea at all how to do that. So the state of art is uh, 3,000 neurons uh, right, uh, by neural link. Uh, however, uh, you know, the supercomputer in terms of data processing capability, data storage capability, uh, we can, uh, you know, uh, uh, in parallel process uh, the, those data. Uh, due to this uh, weak interface, we still cannot form this, uh, you know, a better understanding of the brain. Uh, then if we can really form, you know, a hu a human machine uh, intelligence, uh, does it mean super intelligence? Uh, if we can change our mind from one avatar to another avatar, uh, does it mean uh, robotics? Uh, and also, can we be the god in our own VR world or the metaverse, right? So the recent uh, hot uh, topic, right? Really, the uh, third impact, extend human capability. Uh, sensors play key role in all these applications. So I, I want to emphasize that. Uh, so enough, uh, you know, things to make us excited, right? So uh, then, uh, you know, uh, it's also a grand challenge in mechanics, materials, and biology. Just due to this very different material properties, human body is soft white living, uh, you know, traditional machines usually based on hard, dry, inorganic materials, right? how to merge them together. That's really the challenge. Uh, then uh, if you take a look at the uh, major components of a uh, human body, right? uh, all the way from, uh, you know, fat to tender, they are all soft materials. Uh, so they are modulus on the order of one kilopascal to 10 megapascal. They are also white containing 70 to 90 percent water. Uh, they are living hydrogels. They can grow, sense, respond, self-heal. Also very robust and their millions of cycles load, right? Uh, then based on this understanding, we propose uh, this uh, uh, concept. Uh, the idea is called a soft materials technology. The idea is to use uh, hydrogels with very similar mechanical and phys physiological properties as different components of the human body, use that to form a long-term interface uh, with the body. And there are already fundamental biological studies uh, to show that efficacy. Uh, then at the same time, uh, we make this soft material very robust to be part of the machine, right? Then you can integrate uh, robots, sensors, actuators, computer chips uh, into this interface. Then hopefully you can form you know, long-term high efficacy interfaces between humans and machines. So that's uh, our idea. Uh, of course, you need to build this on uh, uh, decades of fundamental study uh, in polymers. But uh, we also need uh, a design uh, extreme properties of uh, soft materials, right? So the jello we eat at breakfast, right? Now we need to make this a piece of a jello, uh, very tough, resilient, fatigue resistant, adhesive to both human body and uh, to external, you know, uh, machines. Also active because human body is an active organism. You really want to, you know, interface with that in an active way, right? 
So how do I achieve that? Uh, today, I will talk about a few technological platform instead of discussing individual properties. And this uh, technology platform, especially focused on uh, sensors, uh, I want to you know, use that as uh, examples of uh, those uh, designs of those extreme properties. Right? Uh, the first one is uh, uh, hydrogen bioelectronics uh, to replace metal electrode. Uh, this is, uh, you know, bioelectronics is, uh, you know, ancient uh, phenomenon, right, is thousands of years ago. Uh, we already discovered this phenomenon. And in 1979, really, this uh, fraud lag experiment uh, initiated the uh, you know, scientific study of this phenomenon. And at the very beginning of this century, right, there are already FDA approved devices. These are sensors or, you know, uh, pacemakers uh, to interface with the body, right? So there are now, it's a, a huge business. Over 1 million pacemakers per year, uh, 200,000 defibrillators per year, uh, 50,000 cochlear implants per year. Right? So just a, a, a huge uh, opportunity. Uh, now let's uh, think. So in all those devices, we rely on metal electrode. It's a piece of metal, uh, you know, literally in contact with uh, uh, human tissues. Right? Uh, so for both recording and the stimulation. Right? Now let's take a look at the design criteria for bioelectrode. Uh, we need a high capacitance, high charge injection capability, low modulus to match the you know, mechanical property of tissues, moderate conductivity, we don't need an extremely high conductivity, high stability, you, know, you can see only this high stability is metals, merits, all others are not. Then uh, is metal uh, you know, an ideal candidate for bioelectrode? Uh, so our answer, our, our vision is no. Uh, we believe hydrogel, right, this uh, interface I just proposed, with very similar mechanical and physiological properties as human body, may be a better candidate to interface with the body. Right? Uh, so then uh, I will now discuss details. Uh, we develop a hydrogel bioelectronics. So here you can see these are 3D printed uh, fully hydrogel bioelectronics. Right? Uh, the inner part is a conducting polymer hydrogel. Outer part is a hydrogel insulator. Uh, then with this, uh, now you can pattern very fine electrodes. And these are very soft electrodes. Uh, then we use these soft electrodes uh, to interface, to form a really long-term interface uh, with RADS models. And with that, uh, we can have a long-term you know, individual uh, you know, neural uh, modulation and the neural sensing uh, of uh, within this uh, living RADS right? uh, over uh, days, even months. So that's uh, one example. Uh, the other example is uh, now, uh, so we also developed, so the previous one is uh, very invasive, implantable electronics. Uh, then another field we uh, developed is ingest, uh, ingestible hydrogel bioelectronics. So this is a bioelectronic device, right? Uh, so the size is like a drug pill we take daily. Uh, however, once you take it, you know, uh, within the stomach, due to this acidic environment, it uh, swells dramatically. And the size of uh, this pill uh, become larger than the floor of the you know, uh, stomach. Uh, then it uh, stay in the stomach uh, for days, even uh, you know, a month, so over a month. Uh, then the bioelectronic component uh, within this uh, you know, smart pill uh, will uh, f function over this uh, period of time. Uh, then uh, so here is uh, one example. Now you can continuously measure temperature. This is not a clinical trial, but this is a peak trial over 30 days, right? Uh, you can see uh, continuously over 30 days. Now you can uh, long-term monitoring the gastric temperature over 30 days of uh, a pig for the first time, we believe. So uh, you can see, uh, now you can further zoom in uh, uh, to look at the details, right? So this is the uh, you know, uh, temperature profile over a whole day. Uh, it turns out, so one discovery is uh, this, uh, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, you know, temperature, gastric temperature pattern of uh, this uh, pig is even more regular uh, than many of our students. So let me explain this to you, right? So from 12 a.m. to 8 a.m., uh, relative constant temperature, right? And you can see at the morning, uh, around 7 a.m., uh, there's a drop of this temperature due to breakfast, right? Uh, and then all the way to lunch, another one, very regular, uh, uh, between 11 to 12 p.m. Uh, and then after that, this is some afternoon snack, uh, and then this is uh, you know evening uh, meal, right? This is the dinner, right? You can see, and then uh, so for different pigs, you also have different patterns. So pigs develop this kind of pattern. So uh, basically, now you can see these are very soft material, a piece of hydrogel. 
the rigidity is like a food. Uh, you eat it, it stays in the stomach uh, for days, even months. That can continuously uh, measure the physiological condition of the, uh, you know, currently it's a pig model. And in future, we want to develop uh, human models, uh, you know, uh, clinical trials with this. So that's one. Uh, the other one is uh, bioadhesive. Now, uh, we want to go to another step. So instead of uh, just uh, put uh, something there, we want to even adhere this uh, to the body. So, uh, so we know there are over 200 million major surgeries per year. Uh, most of them require suture to close the wound. However, suturing is uh, not an uh, ideal uh, you know, strategy to close the wound. It can cause tissue damage, pain, scar, infection, even leakage. And if this leakage is uh, you know, severe, it can be fatal scenario, right? Uh, suturing is also an ancient technology. You can see, again, thousands of years ago, we have been using suturing to close the wound. And all the way to, uh, again, the beginning of this century, uh, you know, companies like uh, Johnson Johnson, Ethicon, begin to develop adhesives uh, to replace sutures. However, uh, there are lots of challenges with uh, existing tissue adhesives. Uh, they are weak or brittle. Uh, they form slow uh, adhesion. Uh, many of them are toxic. You know, they use monomers, and those monomers can cure into rigid plastic, and the plastic is more rigid uh, than the native tissues of the human body. And also, the handling of those uh, uh, tissue adhesive can be complicated. It requires UV, heat, mixture, spreading liquids. So with all these uh, complications, it's very challenging to replace suture with tissue adhesives. Uh, the, we develop uh, you know, a strong, fast uh, bioadhesive. Uh, use this, uh, we call it a dry cross-linking mechanism. The key idea is uh, we develop this uh, you know, tissue double-sided tape. So it's like a scotch tape, right? Uh, but uh, you put this, use this to adhere tissues. And this uh, scotch tape, when it's getting in contact with the surface of tissue, it absorbs water. Uh, then it swells up into a hydrogel. Very soft, uh, matching the uh, you know, rigidity of tissues. And then it uh, forms uh, both a fast, uh, uh, reversible adhesion and a strong covalent adhesion with the tissue. And then this uh, adhesive turn into a tough hydrogel so that you have all the components to form extremely strong and fast bioadhesion uh, with this normal form factor, uh, tissue double side tape. So that's that. Uh, then uh, just to show you a sashimi plate. Uh, you can see uh, this is a tendon. Right? We put water in it. Uh, you put a, a tissue double side tape. Five seconds, really. Uh, and then uh, you, know, you can do this uh, peeling test. Uh, extremely uh, strong adhesion. And uh, this is applicable to all other tissues. Right? Uh, let me show you the extremely strong adhesion. So uh, it uh, applies to skin, tendon, stomach, muscle, heart, liver. Right? You can adhere them together. You can adhere hydrogel, silicone, titanium, PDNS, polyimat, polycarbonate, really adhering uh, humans and the machines together within five seconds. And let me just compare with the state of art. So these are the bioadhesive that we can find on market. And these are their performance in terms of strength and the toughness. And by the way, these are, uh, uh, we test those da data, we measure those data, it's consistent with the reported data. So that's the state of our performance. Uh, this is our performance. So you can see multiple times higher uh, than state of art, uh, uh, you know, commercially available bioadhesives. Also, uh, commercially, one usually requires over one minute. So the surgeons need to hold them for one minute to form the adhesion. The tissue double side tape only requires uh, five seconds, right? So that's that. I will not show you the histological data, but I just show you some uh, possible applications. Uh, the next one will be bloody. So if you are allergic to blood, uh, you can turn off. So here is, uh, you know, we poke a hole on the heart, extremely severe hemorrhage uh, condition. And uh, with this uh, bioadhesive technology, within five seconds, uh, we can seal this hole and then save this uh, right. So here is the quantitative summary. Uh, you can see uh, before the puncture, this is a normal blood pressure of this animal. Uh, this animal can be red, can be pig. We did both tests. And then after the puncture, the blood pressure dropped over 50%. Right? And if we let this last a few seconds, uh, this animal will die. 
However, quickly, uh, we can use uh, this bioadhesive technology to seal the wound and it recovers the normal blood pressure. And by the way, this is the Sunlight Heals technology. So the startup is based on this technology. If you're interested, you can take a look at the, uh, the uh, startup uh, spotlight. Uh, so that's that. And then another possibility is adhering sensors to the body, right? So again, we have lots of implants, uh, uh, possible implants in the body. Currently, people suture them on. So here, literally, now you can adhere bioelectrode. Uh, here we use metal because it's rigid. You know, soft one is even easier to adhere. Uh, then here is a surface skin ECG, and at the bottom you can see is the you know epicardial ECG. Uh, it's a stable and biocompatible. Over days, even months, uh, you can see this is a day one to day 14 uh, results. Uh, in terms of conductivity, impedance, interfacial toughness, all maintain similar level. Right? So uh, I will not discuss uh, further of this direction, but uh, so we develop very soft sensors similar to human body. Uh, so I demonstrated the uh, implantable and the ingestible, even wearable applications. So we develop all these applications to measure human body uh, you know, activity and the physiological condition. At the same time, we develop adhesive technology, both for wound and for bioimplants into the body. Uh, then the last one, I want to discuss uh, quickly the, uh, this uh, uh, soft scenario. Right? Uh, so this is a bio robots to remotely empower doctors. So uh, I'll go directly to the problem, as I mentioned. Uh, how to treat a uh, patient, uh, you know, especially this uh, ischemia uh, stroke patient uh, within this uh, golden hour, right? Uh, this is number one cause of uh, disability, number four cause of death, right? Uh, huge societal impact, and especially after COVID, we see more and more, uh, you know, uh, stroke patient due to COVID. Uh, however, stroke is also reversible, can be reversed, uh, you know, uh, within this golden hour. Then how to reverse this? Let me tell you uh, what's the uh, currently uh, standard practice. This is uh, called a J-shaped guide wire, right? Uh, so the, uh, neuro, uh, the surgeon, neurosurgeon, will make an incision at the leg of this patient, and then they insert this long wire all the way from the groin of this patient uh, to the brain, right? So then you may ask, how do I navigate my guide wire during this process? Because the tip of this guide wire is J-shaped, right? Uh, then the neurosurgeon rotate from outside and the inside, this uh, J-shaped tip can rotate and then navigate to the desired branches, right? Uh, lots of challenges. Number one, loss of uh, maneuverability under large friction. Uh, number two, unavailability of uh, doctors, especially in rural areas. This is an uh, intrinsic challenge, right? It's impossible to put a neurosurgeon uh, in every hospital, let's say in New Hampshire or Vermont, right? Uh, we are lucky we are in Boston. Boston we have medical centers that can host those doctors. However, uh, for these uh, heroic doctors, they suffered a lot. They suffer from accumulated radiation from X-ray because the whole process will be guided by X-ray, you know, uh, this uh, X-ray fluoroscopy. So uh, for the patient, it, uh, it's one time. Uh, for the doctors, it's their whole career. So they also uh, worry a lot. Right. How do we uh, address that? So we propose a new technology. Uh, this technology, we do not uh, rotate guide anymore. Uh, so we make uh, this kind of uh, a soft robot. So this is a soft continuous robot uh, with magnetic particles inside. It's a straight shape. And then once you apply external magnetic field, it will bend on demand, right? No need of rotation anymore. You just apply external magnetic field. So it will bend on demand. At the same time, uh, this hydrogen will provide this uh, human machine interface. Very soft, very slippery hydrogen skin uh, will make this, uh, you know, uh, greatly reduce the friction of this robot in the body. Uh, let me show you, just uh, directly show you the results. So here uh, is the system. So we develop fully system level uh, equipment. So this is a fluoroscopy. Uh, this is a robotic arm to control a magnet to apply the external magnetic field. And then this is inside the body. This is the guide wire. Right? You can see the whole system is controlled by this uh, joystick. Uh, so, and we also have a robotic arm to advance or retract uh, this guide wire to the uh, lesion area of the brain. And the full uh, process is automated. So the neurosurgeon can operate that in another room, even another city. Right? Uh, you can see this whole process. Right? 
just beautifully how to navigate this guy. These are very challenging anatomy of a neurovasculature system. So even for very experienced neurosurgeon, uh, it's very challenging to navigate that uh, small, uh, you know, J-shaped gadware in this uh, kind of blood vessel. But uh, now in our system, uh, easily, even unexperienced neurosurgeon, after a few trainings, uh, they can easily navigate uh, around those uh, complex anatomy. And then uh, let me show you some uh, clinical indication. Uh, so there are two key uh, clinical indication. Number one is uh, the treatment of uh, aneurysm. Right? Here is an uh, aneurysm. Uh, you can see we can navigate this guidewire all the way to this aneurysm, and then we use the robot to deliver a, a microcatheter to this place, right? So this is a microcatheter, like a conduit. Uh, and then the robot will deliver this uh, coil embolization. So this is a, a alloy uh, you know, wire. So they form these coils inside the, uh, the, the aneurysm. Uh, then you, uh, you know, treat that uh, aneurysm. Uh, another one is a stroke, right, ischemia stroke. So you can see here, uh, you know, here is a clot, right? So, and then all the way, uh, this guidewire will pierce through the clot. So this takes uh, neurosurgeons, you know, minutes to hours to operate. With our system, now it's uh, in the matter of uh, a few seconds, very, very fast, very, very quick. And then you can even potentially automate the whole process. So you can see, then you deliver this uh, uh, microcatheter, and then you retract uh, the guide wire. And then you deliver something called a stent retriever. Uh, it's like a net uh, to capture this cloud. And by the way, uh, the length scale here is just, uh, you know, uh, hundreds of uh, micrometer. This is really a very small scale. We zoom in, uh, you can see, uh, all together, uh, remove this uh, uh, clot. So this is a robot, always a robot. Uh, so that's that. Then you may ask, okay, this is a realistic phantom. Uh, how about, uh, uh, you know, in live animals? So in collaboration with Harvard Medical School, uh, we even did this in a live animal model. So this is the elbow of leg, and this is a very mature protocol to approximate the complex neurovasculature of human brain. Uh, you are not using pig brain to uh, approximate human brain. You use this elbow. So this is a, a well-developed uh, you know, uh, protocol. And here you can see uh, this is the angiography uh, you know, image, uh, the whole system. And then you may even hear the beeping sound of uh, this, uh, oh, okay, the sound is not playing. Uh, just tell you the pig is alive during this whole process. Uh, so you can see uh, from externally, you control the magnetic field. Uh, you navigate this guide wire beautifully uh, uh, within this uh, blood vessel. And uh, by the way, uh, we have a roadmap. This is our GPS. So based on this roadmap, we can control how to navigate the guide wire. Uh, here is a real time, like the LIDAR sensors, right? There was a talk on LIDAR sensors. So this is the LIDAR sensor in the blood vessel. Uh, the whole process can be potentially automated. Uh, so I will uh, just uh, move to, uh, so I wanna uh, tell everyone our vision. So the vision we have is uh, AI plus 5G or 6G, uh, basic high-speed communication plus robotics. Uh, many people think this will give us autonomous car, right? Scientists is working extremely hard towards this vision, right? Uh, however, there can be societal issues, right? How about so many Uber and Lyft drivers, right? They will be out of job. Uh, then how about pedestrian? If there were an uh, accident, right? Uh, who should be responsible for this accident, right? The pedestrian, the car driver, car owner, there can be lots of societal issues. However, we believe uh, this, uh, of course, sensor technology is extremely important, represent the future of medicine, especially in uh, minimal invasive, tightly robotic uh, you know, uh, treatment uh, sector. Uh, so because we are working very hard, scientists are all for it. Uh, surgeons, right? Uh, they are actually totally on board because we are not replacing surgeons. We are remotely enabling surgeons so they can save more lives remotely. Uh, patients, time loss equal to brain loss. So time, uh, patients are on board as well. And all the technology are converging to the point that uh, really make this into something real. And we have full confidence in that. 
Uh, so with that, I will summarize. Uh, so I convey these meshes of merging human machine intelligence. Uh, I discuss the sensors and the, some robotic topics. I hope you are interested. Uh, the potential impact can be huge. Better health, understand the brain, extend the human capability. Uh, and uh, so this is uh, really Sana Hill's uh, technology now. So this uh, startup is translating this uh, technology, uh, biotechnology technology uh, for you know, societal and the clinical impacts. Yeah. Acknowledgement, so uh, uh, in terms of the bioelectronics, uh, Bao Yang Lu and uh, Hyun Wu Yuk, Hyun Wu is actually in the audience, uh, so they really contribute uh, dramatically in this uh, bioelectronics area. And then there's a brilliant uh, student, uh, Hyun Wu Yuk, uh, who is the CTO of Sana Hill, by the way, uh, is uh, you know, in charge of this whole bioadhesive platform. Uh, Yuno Kim is in charge of this uh, bio robots area and, uh, with uh, Liu Wang and Rick Zhao. This is currently an uh, assistant professor at Stanford University. And uh, oh, uh, the last one. So acknowledgement, uh, Alan Roach, uh, Sean Chester, Pradeep Sharma, uh, Babi Padar, these are research collaborators. And we have a whole team, dream team of clinical uh, uh, collaborators. Uh, Christoph Napzi, uh, Rafa Biano, uh, Leah Griffith, Aris Vavs, uh, Franco Lazofo, Aman Patel, who is the chief neurosurgeon at uh, MGH and the funding agencies. Thank you very much. Enthusiasm. He actually ended up on time, so we do have time for questions. Sure. That was excellent. Uh, questions? Sure. Yes, the, the photos that you were showing, basically with the robot guiding sure. the probe, are those in actual, uh, from angiograms, actual patients, or uh, is it a 3D model? So those are not uh, uh, so those are not for real patients. Those are in phantom and in pig models. So we did that in uh, phantom. Basically, uh, people three D print real size vasculature of the patients, and then uh, so those are in those phantom and also in live pig models. And so some of the videos yeah. you show the actual you show the actual video yeah. of the probe going through the yes. arteries yes. of the pig. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Very impressive. Yeah, that's the uh, angiography uh, uh, videos, yeah. What, what first moved you to going into vascular intervention? Something, some aha moment? Uh, it seems well, like a step away from what you've been doing previously. Uh, so, so there are two reasons. Number one, right, uh, in the rigid uh, medical robots, you know, Da Vinci or intu intuitive robotics is doing so well. But we think this endovasculature area has a huge opportunity, and we believe our technology is much more advanced than the current state-of-art technology. So we decided to join this region. So it was looking at what Da Vinci couldn't do. That was, uh, or they have not, uh, you know, have not worked on it yet. Let me put it in this way. There are other companies working on this, but not based on our technology. So it's a different. It's beautiful. Uh, it looks. It looks alive. Yeah. I, I would you. never be a good marketer, but I would call it tapeworm. Uh, That's thank you. terrible. Thank you. Thank you. Any, anyone else? Question. Okay. If not, yeah, there is a question. Which technology? Uh, the, 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 the tapeworm one. Oh. <laughs> the the bioadhesive? It's, 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 it's catchy. Huh? I'm sorry, it's, it's very catchy. The bioadhesive one, double-sided tape? No. Huh? Oh. Guidewire, guidewire. Oh, yeah. that one, uh, so uh, uh, I think uh, uh, in uh, probably in a, couple, a few years, let me put it in this way. So uh, uh, it turns out the FDA approval for that technology, actually the bar is lower. Uh, because you know it doesn't require too many you know even animal uh, preclinical pre trials, so that uh, can be you know quite, uh, relatively fast. Yeah. Uh, okay, one more question. I'm trying to stay on time. Yeah. With regard to the basically electrical performance sure. of the, the your bio electrode compared to the metal sure, ones, sure. in terms of voltage or conductivity, can you provide any comments to their 
electrical parameters? Oh, thank you. This is a great question. The question is in terms of electrical performance of our bioelectrode versus a metal bioelectrode. Uh, I can say one thing, for example, for heart pacing, basic stimulation of heart muscles, we only require much lower voltage than the metal one because the charge injection capability of this uh, hydrogel bioelectrode is much, much higher than the metal one. So uh, it's, it's a huge advantage uh, in comparison with the rigid metal electrode. So you have a performance advantage? Yes. Thank you. Indeed, yeah. Okay, great. Let's, let's end right there. Thank you so much. Another round of applause. <laughs>